What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the vlog. We're on a new project now and today we're getting the footings installed. We're also going to start some of the framing but what we're mainly going to focus on in this video is how we do our footing layout and make sure that everything goes in right where we need it because we have roof loads going on here and our footing needs to be right below our beam on our deck framing so that everything is supported properly. So make sure you hit subscribe. Stay tuned. So here is the next project. You can see we got a nice blank slate here. This is a new construction home. Take a second, look at the design. We're gonna start our footing layout here. So you can see one way to get a nice square line off of the house is to put your string line way back on the house there and then have it touch the corner and we know that we're coming off square, at least in relation to the house, which is what we want. So we're getting a couple reference marks here. This area over here is gonna be the open deck. This is where the roof's gonna go. So we've got about six footings that really need to be pretty precise. So we'll get to those in a second. Now that we have our one reference line all strung up here, we've then made marks. And right here we've strung another line. This is gonna be a beam that shoots all the way across. This is gonna be the outside of our open deck. These footings are gonna be right on the edge, so these need to be precise. We also have another reference line right here. This is gonna be where the edge of our screen porch is. So this is 28 feet away from the house. This right here, 16 feet. And you might be wondering what we're doing around all of this stuff coming out of the house. This is the sprinkler, the exhaust for the furnace, sump pump right there. So we're gonna actually have our deck come back like this and then return to the house here. This is gonna be like a little daybed chill area, a little nook, it's gonna be sweet. So our most critical spots are coming off the house here because this is a straight beam and our post for our roof is gonna sit right on top of that beam. So these need to be in a nice straight line. These also need to be in a nice straight line. And then these two, this part's pretty simple. These need to be in a straight line because this is gonna be the front of our open deck. But all of these roof footings need to be exact. This needs to be a perfectly straight line for our footing. So we're just making sure that this line and that line are the exact same measurement off of our reference line over here. So. Just a couple more to mark out, and we'll be all good. Right on cue, we got the Goliath Tech boys out here. I think what I wanna show you in this vlog is just how much we can get done in one day with these Goliath Tech footings, because we got here at about 9 a.m., had nothing done, had to mark out all of our footings. Footings will get installed, and we'll start framing. We'll show you just how much we can get done because of these Goliath Tech footings. Got my man Joey here. He's setting up all of our brackets for us. Yes, sir. You can see right there, that's where the adjustability comes from. We got that six inches up and down. We can move it if we need to. Three feet in the ground. Three feet. Nah, we're going all the way, hopefully. Yeah, we're going like seven feet, baby. See how hard the ground is. We got 12 footings going in. We got some of these HP3 and we got some HP4 here. I don't know where they're going yet, but uh, their engineer specs out all of our loads, so make sure this structure ain't going nowhere. Wasting no time here. A couple footings in, but we're starting to prep for our framing here. Getting the siding taken off for our ledger board. We should have most of this framed up today, at least all the joists in. If this was concrete, this would be at best probably day four so we got this footing going in and this is exactly why we love these goliath tech yokel piles this did not reach the torque that it needed to bear the capacity that we need it to so they can tell that from their gauge on the machine and they can put an extender on it and just keep going until we hit that torque and we know it's locked in for justice justice What do we got now, Kyle? 1500. 
1,500. That'll hold 15,000 pounds. What did we need on that? Did we need to hit 1,500? No, we need about five, six hundred. Five, six hundred, and we're already we're at fifteen hundred. Sold, 1, sold seventy six hundred pounds. And what were we at before? Like three hundred? Yeah, like three hundred, three fifty. Three hundred, three fifty. So a little extension, jack that up twelve hundred. That's locked in for justice. Holds, holds a lot more weight than you're gonna need. Tommy Goose. Time's over. It's time to get down to business. So we got here at 9 a.m. Nothing was done. No marks on the ground. Got it marked out. Footings are in by lunchtime. Already have our ledger board up. And now we're getting ready to frame. He's leveling them right now. This one we just set to our level and he's just gonna go across. And all you gotta do is just spin that bracket. That's bringing it up a tiny bit and you can fine tune it so you got it right on. Stop. Tighten it up. Tighten it up. Lock it in. Locking it in for justice. He's getting our uh, brackets secured to the helical pile. Again, three bolts on this. One for uplift resistance and then two for lateral stability. Or no, it's the opposite. Yeah, it's the opposite. It's the opposite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Two for uplift, one for lateral stability. So he's putting in the uplift bolts right now. They go through this pipe into it so that this can't come off. Then he'll put one in the side there. That's gonna tighten it up against the pile and that's gonna keep us nice and strong laterally. Got all of our beams in place here. You can see how we just have six by six here. Triple beam sits right on top. And then we have this little scab tying the two pieces together with some structural screws. Put a little bevel on it so any rainfall just run right off. So for all of our beams and all of our joists, basically all of our framing, what we're using here is Pro Wood Ground Contact. So this is treated with a higher preservative amount and that's for any structural applications like beams or joists, we're gonna use that. We already have layout on our ledger here. So we pulled a square line off of the house. That gave us this mark right here, this mark right here. And now Tony can pull layout on all of our beams. We can start throwing up joists. It's about three o'clock. Started with nothing at 9 a.m. this morning. Looking good. Oh yeah. All right, so we didn't quite get this whole thing framed up on day one, but I'd say we got pretty close for not starting framing till about lunchtime. We got a lot done. So we're gonna jump on blocking, some trim nailers, all that kind of stuff to really solidify our whole deck frame here and get ready for some of the trim details. So a little bit more to go in this frame, but I think by the end of today, we'll be good to go. blocking done over here let me show you look at that and this is mid span blocking so any span between beams that's over eight feet our plans call for mid span blocking that's gonna keep everything nice and tight and keep these from bowing out which could put pressure on the decking and then pop some of those fasteners so this is important to do 
And you can see here, we leave these just a tiny bit low, about a quarter inch, so that when we go around and plane everything flat, these are not gonna get in our way. So, a little trick there, helps you out, saves you a little bit of time. All right, we're getting ready to set our beams here. What we need to do first is set these six by sixes. So what are we doing, Pat? We're just leveling them and then uh, putting a two by four in there for bracing uh, to temporarily hold it until we get our- To temporarily what? Keep it true and- To temporarily what? Locking it for justice. Say it again. Locking it for justice. There you go, lock it in for justice. So we have five of these six by sixes going up. We're gonna have a different type of uh, post, basically a doubled up two by six against the house to receive the beam. But we have these six by sixes here and we just set them in our post base and then we're screwing them in here. Pat levels it when he says it's good, I screw that in. So we have it braced both ways, nice and plumb. Two more to go. Really? Yep, over there. Oh, okay. okay. So we just got our beams up here. Those are some heavy ones. They're five and a half by 11 and three quarter. And this whole span is 28 feet. So we did cut these down so that we could put these up in two pieces. Still pretty heavy, but uh, it's splitting right in the middle of that six by six. So still locked in for justice. Now we're starting on these knee walls here. We're gonna have knee walls that go basically all the way around. This is gonna be a full wall where the fireplace is gonna be. Our detail for these knee walls, because we're gonna have a little sill on top of here, we ripped down these two by fours to three inches. So then when we put our fascia trim on the front, which is a five quarter by six piece of decking, and on the inside, that leaves us with five inches. So we'll have a quarter inch overhang on both sides. Nice little detail there. And then we're gonna pretty much do the same thing here. We're gonna have a piece running straight up front and back. This is also ripped to three. So when we add decking to the front and the back, that equals five. We'll have that trim piece that runs up the side and that is gonna have a quarter inch overhang as well. It's gonna look super nice. Yeah, level. This one? Yeah. Sure, bud. Thanks. Yeah, you got it. So. We're about two and a half days in here. We've got a lot of this done. We just got the beams up. Next thing is gonna be our roof framing and we have a regular stick built frame going in here. Two by eight rafters. We have a two by 10 ridge that we're gonna do. So we're gonna get to that in the next video. So make sure you stay tuned for that. Hit that subscribe button, like and comment on this video. Please just do it, please, dear God, we need it. But until next time, this is Premier Outdoor Living.